All right, so today's discussion is specifically targeted towards beginner snake keepers, and that is how to handle your snake. At the very beginning, first of all, we have to talk about you. <laughs> we have to talk about you instead of the snake. And there's a lot of people that come into my reptile room holding snakes for the first time ever. Some people are extremely terrified of snakes where they can't hold a snake, and some people are willing to. They've maybe seen some of my videos or some other videos and they want to get into ball pythons but they still have that hesitation or the fear as a matter of fact there's a lot of people I put the snake in their hand and their hands start shaking and let me tell you that that is perfectly normal for a beginner snake keeper it's it didn't really happen to me because I pretty much grew up with garter snakes I had snakes when I was a kid and we catch ca caught them in the wild and they bite my arms we bleed all over and the funny thing about a garter snake is you pick up the snake and he'd bite you once, maybe, and then he was your friend for life. It, it's it's the weirdest thing. It's just they kind of like they kind of like snap, going, "Oh, you're not gonna hurt me," and they kind of they kind of tag you, and they they kind of freak out just for a little bit, and then they kind of switch. And I'll talk about the moods of snakes here in a bit, but really, what it comes to is overcoming your fear and intrepidation when you're picking up a snake. So, I think probably the easiest way to kind of explain uh, what you're really afraid of. You're really afraid of getting bit. I know, <laughs> because that's the biggest thing. And especially if you open up a tub where there's a snake in it and that snake starts hissing. Let me tell you, that can be terrifying. If you're not used to snakes, if you're not really sure what's going on, it's kind of like opening up a beehive and the whole thing's humming. It can be really frightening. And with snakes, I think it really comes down to knowing the different types of snakes. And for example, this ball python right here, this is this is a pinstripe pied uh, ball python. And ball pythons are the mellowest snakes ever. These are the least likely to bite you and probably the least likely to move at all. You notice I'm just kind of holding him here and he's just not even moving. <laughs> this is like, this is pretty typical for a ball python and that is why they're so popular because you can give this snake to a beginner. Not only will the snake not bite you, it won't hardly move at all. And, and sometimes I'll give a beginner like a king snake or something like that and it starts moving around and they freak out and that's kind of one of the advantages of ball pythons being kind of the universal snake. So I'd say if you're holding a snake for a first time, you probably should hold a ball python. And there's some snakes you probably don't want to hold for the first time. And that is, uh, I'm going to kind of name some snakes that I've seen that are pretty aggressive by nature. They can be tamed down. One of them is blood pythons. Blood pythons are normally really aggressive, kind of, uh, I would say they're a little bit harder to tame as, as, as far as the snake. And uh, rat snakes, certain rat snakes, especially the king rat, I've seen you know, most of the king rats that I've seen are really wild and will bite a lot more than a ball python. So these snakes will actually, uh, it's kind of like dogs where some are just, you know, in their genetics, they're just programmed to bite first. And, and some of them are programmed like a ball python just to kind of ball up if it gets scared instead of bite. Another one is the green tree python. You know, the green snakes that kind of wrap around the the limbs on trees you see them in pet stores sometimes those are really a non handleable snake and most people say you can't really handle you know the blood pythons the king rats or the green tree pythons but I have actually seen all three uh, examples extremely puppy dog tame where they wouldn't bite anybody and it's, it's kind of the same with a lot of snakes but I would say by nature by far the ball python is probably the most docile out of all the snakes so now that you kind of get over your fears <laughs> you know which snake you want to handle and, and you know I, I would say uh, from here probably what you want to do is is kind of uh, I, there's, I guess there's different ways we can go. There's the different personalities of different snakes. I'd probably go there. So, for example, if someone hands you a ball python 
uh, you probably want to ask about that snake. Is that snake mean? Is it defensive? I've seen probably one or two ball pythons that had a kind of a bad experience and a bad personality. As a matter of fact, if you pick up any snake, I would probably ask the owner, you know, is that snake going to bite me? <laughs> you know, is, do, I, do I have any risk of that? And, and, and a lot of times it comes down to knowing the personality of the snakes. As a matter of fact, I have some snakes here that, uh, that probably would bite me under the certain circumstances, and we'll kind of go over that too. So I would say from here, let's go over the different ways to hold a snake. And, and first of all, what you really don't want to do is you don't really want to hold them like this, kind of non-suspended just by the middle. You really want to hold them uh, as far as supporting most of their body because they're really not comfortable if you just hold them, especially if you try to hold them by the tail. You know, you see a lot of these guys with the venomous snakes hold them by the tail and then kind of a hook. And I, I really wouldn't hold a snake by the tail unless it's like a wild venomous snake and you have no choice but to keep that head away from me because it's life or death. You know, most snakes, I would say, don't hold them by the tail. Another one that you see a lot of these guys, especially with wild snakes, you know, they'll hold them right behind the neck, like right here. They'll grab them. And I would say never really grab a snake by the neck. This one is, this one's so puppy dog tame. You can do anything with a snake. Look at this. <laughs> it's just, it's like, uh, you can do anything you want with me. And it's, it's just fine. But most snakes, if you grab them by the neck, especially if they're scared and you, you try to keep them from biting you, what that does is it actually, you lose the confidence in the snake. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to build trust between the snake and yourself. And, and it, if the snake bites you, you lose trust. And if you grab behind the head, then the snake loses trust in you. And it's kind of, kind of the worst thing that either one of you can do. <laughs> so, so that's pretty much it. And then uh, there's, I would say if a snake is in shed, I would probably avoid handling a snake in shed. What I want to do is I want to kind of show you some of my snakes and I'll go through kind of from the smallest snake all the way to some of my bigger snakes. And I want to tell you some of the things to watch out for when you're handling snakes, when you're approaching these snakes. Well, the first thing you really have to do is read the mood of a snake. And a snake changes moods from one mood to another really fast, unlike any other animal. It's like, you can read them. Like, like this one is totally placid. I know this one's not gonna run away. It's not gonna bite me. It's not gonna do anything. <laughs> so it, the mood of this snake is, is what I call handling mode. And once you get a ball python in handling mode, it's rare that they really shift moods into anything else and there's pretty much i'd say like five or six modes or moods of a snake so there's a handling mode there's the flight mode there's the aggressive biting mode and there's a feeding mode and the feeding mode is is probably the most dangerous for ball pythons if, if you're trying to avoid getting bit every time i get bit it's usually in the feeding mode and then the aggressive mode when they're like defending themselves the only time i really get bit from ball pythons is when i'm handling hatchlings and hatchlings get a little confused because they're born and they're not used to people and they don't really know how to act. That's, it's really hard to feed them sometimes too because you put the food in there and sometimes they're in defensive mode trying to fend off, the, you know, trying to protect themselves from the rodent instead of wrapping it and eating it. And that's why it's hard to, to start some of these ball python hatchlings. So let's jump in and I want to show you some of these snakes and we'll, we'll kind of see what mode they're in. And I want to give you some tips on how to, to pick them up, how to approach, and how to handle these snakes. All right, so I'm going to start off with one of my smallest snakes. I don't have really small ones yet. They're almost ready to hatch out of the egg. These are my holdbacks from last year. And take a look at this one. You can see he's just kind of on the hot spot and he's kind of, you see his head's kind of, uh, kind of like, almost like he's going to launch it. That's kind of a warning where you don't want to really, so, so for example, some of these snakes, if I was to put my finger right in front of the mouth of that snake, he would most likely bite me. And, and the funny thing is, is I don't think snakes can really see that well. Yeah, to, to tell if you're offering them a rat or if you're off if you're have your finger in there so really what you have to do from this one I would recommend you know you don't want to stick your hand in there actually you'd probably want to take the tub out and put it on another surface so for example if I put it over here 
And what you really want to do is put it here and then you want to come around from the back of the snake over here because the snake really can't bite behind the head here. You really want to avoid the front danger zone up there and then you pick them up from behind. And with, especially with ball pythons like this, the babies, usually this size, sometimes if you pick them up, they'll kind of give you a hiss <laughs> a little bit, and they'll kind of hiss. And once you pick them up, usually they go right into handling mode. So you see, when we first went in, he was kind of in a defensive mode, and now he's more of in a handling mode. And I guarantee this snake will not bite you. Now that he's in a handling mode, you can put your hand right in front of his mouth, and he will not bite you. It's, it's weird how they switch modes like that. And the only thing that ball pythons really don't like is having their head touched. So I would really avoid touch. See, he jumped like that. That's because I'm touching his head. They're really head shy. See, <laughs> you can touch them almost anywhere else and, and um, it, it won't bother them unless you touch them around their head. And another mode is flight mode. So if you really agitate a snake, it'll just really take off. <laughs> and ball pythons, sometimes they can really just launch if you really keep agitating them like that. But see, he's in a handling mode. This snake will not bite me at all. There's no chance that this snake would bite me. I could play with his head. I could put his my fingers right by his mouth. There's zero chance that this snake will bite me right now because he's in handling mode. And it's weird how you open the tub and he'll take a bite. Right now, he won't bite you at all. No way. Look at that. <laughs> There's no way the snake's going to bite you. And that's just kind of how to read snakes from one extreme to the other. And knowing what mode they're in is really key. So here's another snake. This one is a snake that has some bad history. <laughs> this one we actually kind of got beat up in the mail when he, she was shipped over to me as a hatchling and she never really snapped out of it. And the, the funny thing is, is if we just kind of stood here and watched the snake, eventually she would start snapping at me. So this is, this is pretty much where it comes down to the personality of snakes. If you're trying to avoid getting bit, I probably wouldn't handle this. As a matter of fact, if guests came over, I would not hand this one out to hold. This this girl is, you can tell she's, she, even when I, and, and then she's like really super scared that she basically won't really go into much of a handling mode. She'll go from, you know, wanting to snap me like aggressive, like when we first came in, she was kind of aggressive. Now she's kind of in a hiding kind of a flight mode. And the flight mode for ball pythons is when they really kind of curl up and ball up. That's when they're scared. And she'll come out of this and go right back in defensive mode. The good thing about ball pythons is they usually stay in a, <laughs> in a, a, a kind of a ball for quite a bit. So when she balls up, you can handle her without fear of getting bit because she's kind of in a scared flight mode. But then, you know, this, this particular snake will come right out of it and she'll turn around and even if I just stand here long enough, she'll like take a bite. Sometimes she'll just snap in the air so hard she'll flip over. It's, it's pretty amazing. And that is just an example of an interesting personality of a ball python. And usually it's, it's I'd say this is extremely rare in ball pythons. I've never actually, <laughs> oh yes, did you see that? <laughs> oh man, yeah, that is, <laughs> that is my little snap right there. <laughs> All right, so here's another example of a ball python that actually bit me last week, and I was bleeding all over the place like a pig. It was, it was pretty amazing, and it was this one, and I was actually just opening it just like this, and he came, she came flying out and bit my finger, and that was an extreme feeding response. So the other thing is, is when you open these tubs, you have to really watch for the feeding responses because sometimes, you know, they can think your hand is a rat and they'll come out and grab you. But this one is completely mellow. It's, yeah, I can actually get her up and handle her, no problem at all. She actually just ate recently, so I'm not gonna pick her up. You can see she's got a little lump for a rat. That's the other thing you really don't wanna do is if a snake eats, you wanna give it at least 48 hours to digest before you pick up that snake. And this snake is perfectly fine. It just bit me kind of as a mistake because it thought I was feeding it and it actually jumped out and got my hand instead. All right, so let's move up to some big snakes. This is one of my reticulated pythons. This is Sunny. I just have two retics 
and all the rest are ball pythons. I'm actually thinking about getting into some boas or something like that. This is probably all the bigger he'll get because he's 37% super dwarf. But the interesting thing about this snake is it doesn't look like this one's going into shed because the eyes aren't cloudy and the color's kind of cleared up. But I know that this boy, this girl, this boy <laughs> is right about to shed because he got really, really cloudy, stopped eating, his eyes clouded up. And really, if, if a snake goes into a shed, I tend to leave him alone. This one usually gets really grumpy when he goes into a shed. And I think they can't see and they want to be left alone. And you can see they really don't move much. And he's a big snake. He's probably, you know, about 35 pounds or so. So he's a pretty decent sized snake. And at this point, I would not mess with the snake because I know it's going into the shed. After it comes out of the shed, I would definitely handle the snake. But I know the personality of this one, he's still a pretty flighty snake. He's always been really skittish ever since he was little. And he used to really snap at me like crazy. And he's finally getting out of it. If, if I really agitate him a lot, he'll throw me a snap here and there. But um, I don't 100% trust this guy. But at, the, at this point, I would definitely not handle him because he's gone into the shed. So here is Lucy, my big, huge, reticulated python. She is, the funny thing about this girl is she also goes into a shed the same time as Sunny does. They kind of have the same cycle. I've been pairing them up and feeding at the same time and kind of going through the same cycle. And they, they shed almost within days of each other. So this girl is actually shedding and she is actually really gravid. I think this right here, this is this is all full of eggs. She's, I'm hoping she's gonna lay probably 35 or 40 eggs. She's gonna have an incredible amount. This Hopefully this will be the first year that she actually breeds and you can tell she's just like leave me alone don't touch me because she's going into the shed as well and and the other thing if especially for reticulated pythons they go kind of through different cycles so now she's in the shed cycle it's kind of leave me alone then they come out of it after they shed and it's really good to handle them after they shed as long as they're not full of eggs I would definitely not handle <coughs> any snake that's full of eggs but if she wasn't full of eggs I'd be fine handling her until you start feeding her and when you feed a snake like this the first two or three rats are fine and then once you get to like the fourth or the fifth they go into a wild crazed feeding mode to so me i'm actually afraid to open this enclosure <laughs> she's just banging against the walls and the ceiling and going crazy in that feeding mode and that is really it's kind of hard to break them out of the feeding mode you can actually break them out you know with the with a hook and that's usually what you use a hook for you kind of deflect their head and kind of move them around a little bit until they're like oh i'm not okay i'm not going to eat let's go into handling mode and switch them over to handling mode but usually if they're gravid or if they're shedding or if they're in a wild feeding mode especially for retics i will definitely just leave them alone and view them from a distance <laughs> okay so those are a few of the things you really want to focus on when you're getting ready to handle your first snake and that is kind of focus on yourself take a deep breath and just relax you really want to know what kind of snake you're picking up and if it's if it tends to bite by nature you want to talk to the owner and make sure if that snake is is tame enough not to bite you and usually when I'm handing out snakes at the reptile shows I give people a snake especially for the first time and I say I guarantee 100% this snake will not bite you <laughs> I can guarantee it and then it really calms people they know that they are it really gives them a lot more confidence when they pick up that snake and then really uh, other than the reptile shows I'd say usually the, the reptile shows most of the snakes are kind of off guard and they won't really bite you but when you're going into enclosures you really have to watch your approach on the snakes kind of figure out what mood they're in if they're in a in an aggressive mood if they're in a feeding mode you really have to watch yourself go around the back of the snake or with ball pythons sometimes if you can get them into the ball position you can move them around and just leave them alone especially if you have some with a bad attitude like I showed you earlier so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time